This episode has been sponsored by Lion's Den Adult Superstore. Hi, I'm Leroy Myers. Hello, I'm Tara Patrick. And we're gonna try something here. We get a lot of (laughs) fan mail. Um, So we're gonna answer some fan mail, but we're also gonna give some advice. A lot of people wondering about sex. Mr. Miyagi's ready to give some advice. How many scenes have you done? I would say under 300. From that time period when I worked from 2000 to 2008, I mean, we shot a fraction. We were con- under contract. Right. And I shot for my own company, so you could do five movies a year. In fact, I remember the vivid, wicked, like a lot of the contracts were like seven, eight, ten movies a year. And yeah. they really focused on branding, you know? So it was just a different ball game. Ball game. Um, now, the amount of content that they really try to push out. I mean, you see people like, they get to 2,000, 3,000 scenes, 4,000 yeah. scenes. And I think we're at a different time also. It's sure. There's no money coming in. Right. So you have to work eight times as hard to sure. just make a living. So from like 2008 to 2012, that four year gap, I had moved to Europe. I kind of was just focused on different things in my life, but I still kept promoting my fleshlight and certain novelties and certain things that were still bringing me in revenue. You're happy with that. Absolutely. I just will never shoot hardcore for the simple reason because like even every day, why won't you come back? Why won't you come back? Shoot a scene with so-and-so, do this. I don't feel like there's anything left to do. I have a question leading into our next, uh, we, we actually have a question from a viewer that wants some advice. Would your husband have a problem with it if you did decide to go back into hardcore? Oh, absolutely. First of all, he's Italian. So yeah, he would just immediately, like I could just see already, what do you think you're doing? We've got this this email. I'm gonna read the whole thing. That looks really long. It (laughs) it is, but it, and I want you to think about this. They're opening their heart to us. Okay. My boyfriend and I don't have sex anymore. He implies that it seems like I don't want to. I would initiate it, but I've initiated it twice, and both times he's made up excuses. One being that he jerked off earlier and didn't have it in him to do it again. He's got a generic Viagra. He got it filled about two weeks ago. He didn't tell me he went and picked it up. Initially, he asked me to get it. He hasn't used it on me yet. I know I should just ask him, but he's like a roller coaster emotionally, and I don't feel like arguing. He keeps his diabetes meds and his other meds all on his dresser, but the boner pills are nowhere in the house. I've already told him if he wants to sleep with other people, he can, but that means I can too. He said that's not what he wants, but I think he just means he doesn't want me to, but I have no proof that he cheats. He told me once that I wear too much makeup, so he'd look at me and be completely turned off. So I wear less makeup and still nothing. No clue if that was just an excuse he made up. I can't be in a relationship without sex. He's got diabetes and that causes erectile dysfunction, but he has a solution in a bottle somewhere and isn't using it on me. I'm taking care of myself sexually, but I'm sick of doing it alone. Any tips about what to do to put an end to this dry spell? How do you see this situation that M's in? I think that he uh, doesn't feel well. I think it's health related. And I think that, you know, one thing I've learned about, I'm gonna say, I mean, cause you know, listen, you guys, and I'm gonna stereotype and say men in general, guys, you guys think you're very chill and easy. Oh no, 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 guys are complicated too. I just think that your issues or subscriptions or, things that you want to talk about, you can't always put to the surface. And I think that has a lot to do with pride. And I think that has a lot to do with ego. And I think it also has a lot to do with what's every man's kind of, I don't want to go as far as to say fear, but rejection, maybe rejection or that someone will laugh at you. I think that communication is, as lame or stereotypical as it sounds, this is so important. Like, you, I mean, I know with what we have to just sometimes say, fuck me you're not gonna pick up every little subtle hint that we get, you know? And so I think that, I think that he doesn't, I think there might just be something physically going on where he doesn't feel 100%. And the interesting thing about her saying, there's a solution in a bottle. You don't know that. Viagra does not work the same on everybody. And I wanna preface this by saying that there was a period, I mean, maybe it still exists, but I remember early, in my production shoots, I caught a guy. He was injecting his dick 
and his dick wouldn't go down and it had been up for two days and I could tell he was sweating. He just wasn't physically feeling well and I didn't realize that he had injected his cough. And I said, you need to go to the hospital. Like this is a, this is serious. Like yeah. your dick not going down for two days is like serious. So my point is he might be nervous to take this right. because he doesn't know if he'll be like, for a woman, cause I've been there too, who's frustrated. Sometimes we just think, get it up, get it in, get it off. Come on, you could do it. But I think it's a lot more than that. I think we all physically go through phases and sometimes when you're just not 100%, you know, it seems like an easy solution to pop a pill and then you pop your cock, but I don't know if that works for everybody. And he might be nervous to articulate that to her. So you don't think he's cheating? No. You think he either is afraid to take the dick pills, so he's yeah. put them somewhere else, or he has tried them and it's failed. Sometimes when you're grappling with something physically that you can't put your finger on, it's also anxiety producing. So I yeah. just think there's a lot of physical things that might be coming into play that he might just be like, I'm trying to work it out. I mean, there's a few details missing too. I don't know. I mean, cheating to me, I think there are obvious signs of cheating from the tone of her email. It doesn't sound like that to me. I think there'd be more hints that she could pick up on if he was cheating. You know, Viagra seems like a super easy solution, but not everybody reacts the same. And anything you take, even vitamins, let's just say natural stuff, I don't know, there was like horny dickweed on the market. Like everyone claims to horny have like some. Horny dickweed was my high school nickname. <laughs> But you know what I'm trying to say, yeah. there's reactions to everything. So I could understand as a man, if you would be hesitant to try something like this. So maybe he's tried it, maybe he hasn't. Right, oh yeah, we don't know. He that's doesn't true. have it anywhere. So to me that's, I, I agree with some suspicion in that he's not getting it, he says he's jerking off. Is he really jerking off? Right. If he's having uh, ED, you know, he could just be saying it right. or he could be doing it. She seems open to an open relationship, but she's afraid to talk to him more than she already has. Right. Um, which d doesn't necessarily put it on her, you know? Like, if he's not opening up to talk about it, whatever he's doing with right now, Right. I think the fact that he's not communicating is a problem. And her too, though, because I think she might be nervous to, like you're saying, to bring up the more. Yeah, she said I, he's kind of an emotional roller coaster. I don't know how how long has it been that they haven't had sex. Right, I don't think it's said how long it had been. I mean, if it's years, okay. It's normal when you have life stuff or you don't feel oh, yeah, well yeah. or just no, to I, take some breaks. Look, so I'm just, I'm just curious to I see also how think long it's there's, been. There, different, everybody's relationship is different. You could never have sex and it could be a normal relationship. That's sure. if, you, if you're if you happy. But the cheating, this is what I'm curious about. Those excuses don't sound to me like cheating type of excuses. Like if he disappears from the house on prime hours, right. or, okay, that might be a little curious. Or if she sees a pattern, like mm -hmm. he always says on Thursdays he goes somewhere and then she's noted because that's- Or he sells, smells sweaty. Or he smells sweaty. <laughs> he comes home smelling like sweat. And he's not a construction worker, mm -hmm, then maybe that could be... suspicion is okay. Cheating doesn't often happen sporadically. I mean, I guess unless you're a sex addict and you just get a one-off, like on the train, on the bus, on the Carl's I... Jr. I mean, Taco Bell. <laughs> you go to like fast food bathrooms or Taco Bell. If you want to have an affair and have diarrhea, like me, me. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, Taco Bell is a good place to do it. So what you're saying is. Don't take the pills not being there as a sign that he's cheating. Right. Um, take bigger signs he's cheating as signs he's cheating, he's cheating if he is. Well, and she had talked about, so she wore less makeup when he had asked her to. So I'm wondering, let's start here. Like maybe she could incorporate. So she had mentioned something about an open relationship. What if she suggested a threesome? But you know, maybe if she set up a scenario, and I'm just thinking because she did, I'm prefacing this with, she said she was okay with an open relationship. Guys always want a threesome. They would love a threesome with two women. Maybe let's just not even get into the fucking part. She could do some kissing or just pick a girl that you're comfortable with. And if maybe, she's comfortable with, of course he could be like it could just okay be with, prefer a guy, guy on girl. Sure, exactly. He could, whatever, whatever you guys are into is what you should kind of aim towards. Start with, well, yeah. and I thought also a lot of, you know, men are very visual. So if she brought a girl home that made her comfortable. Because a girl girl's not invasive for him. Right, you know but if I mean? she's As not man, into girls. I mean, we've seen this scenario in porn before, which yes. is there, you sometimes you're just not girl. into a girl and that's right. okay. Also, a threesome's not for everybody. You no. know, if he is like 
having anxiety because of erectile dysfunction, all things like right. that. He might not be into that. But there's it's something that up. connects all of this, sure. which is they're missing some communication. Yes, absolutely. So whatever is going on, you're not going to figure it out by not talking about it. And if, if he want. is not willing to communicate, maybe that's the sign you need that it's not working rather than he's cheating. Because if he can't talk about it and you can't move forward mm -hmm. and you can't improve things, then it's not going to get better. And you're either going to stick with a shitty relationship the rest of your life no or talk. you're, yeah. Womp womp. Yeah, if you, <laughs> if you want it, you have to say it. it's not a healthy relationship at a certain not point. Not at all. No, and you can't be afraid. I've always said ego and pride really hurt relationships, business relationships, friendships, you know, these types of things where you're just too scared to say, where are the pills? Like I would just say, where are the fucking Sometimes when things become stagnant, you know, I get a lot of questions where like, we've been in it like 10 years, we've been around, you know, shit gets boring, what can we do now? I mean, you know, people do need sometimes, I think like an injection, not an injection, sorry, he doesn't need an injection. Sometimes you just need to be so bold or just super, like you said, you gotta communicate straight, you gotta be a straight shooter, all these puns. There's, there's ways to make your relationship better, but if you're not communicating, or he's not communicating, it's never gonna get better. Use that mouth to talk. We got uh, we got some through Twitter, so you can. Uh, Ooh, if you have a if you have a question, there look, there's the twatters. Twitter. It says it right there. If you want to email us, here's the email, and you can ask us anything about sex, and we will try to answer. This is from. Um, at Rindy Rue, official. They have kind of an ask a porn star type question. You ready? Yes. Now you're, how long have you been retired from hardcore pornography? Since 2008, 10 years. 10 years, and you were top. Like, I mean, you're a porn legend, so I, I mean. I tried to stay on top. I didn't, no, you know, uh, no. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you've got to take it. I was mostly on bottom, but yeah, you gotta take it, exactly. <laughs> so um, he or she asks, What's the most difficult part about being a porn star? The most difficult thing about being a porn star, there's either people that are completely like, you're the devil, you're going to hell, you know, you need Jesus, repent now. I'm like, I will, just let me make my money. And then there's the other people, and they try to hurl every insult at you and just tell you like you're a horrible person. It hasn't like impacted my life, but these types of attitudes kind of follow you. Anyways, thank you, Tara. Porn legend. Yay! Sitting next to me. You're welcome, and thank you for having me. If you would like to sponsor this show, we have different sponsors for different episodes, and you can contact us right here. Thank you, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Mwah.